Sorry, no tripods were harmed during the filming of this video. This video is brought to you by Mountain Extreme of Rockton, PA. Whether you're in the market for a Can-Am, CF Moto, ATV, or side-by-side, Can-Am or KO youth ATVs or dirt bikes, Spider and Riker on-road motorcycles, as well as CF Moto on-road motorcycles, Bad Boy mowers, or even your full line of Articat and Ski-Doo sleds when that white stuff flies. A full line of riding gear and apparel as well to suit your needs. And let's not forget parts and accessories for your machine. When you're ready for the peak of performance in the power sports game, then look no farther than Mountain Extreme of Rockton, PA. All right, everyone, I got another machine here to review coming up. It is the CF Moto C-Force 1000 Touring, that's right. We got the big guy, the big dog, the big flagship from CF Motos on their ATV side, and that is the Seaforce 1000 Touring. This is not going to be the review. This is going to be just an overlook because we've been getting a pile of rain the last several days, and everything is absolutely sloppy muddy. So this is the cleanest this guy is going to be. So I figured since it's nice and clean, let's do my walk around, and I'll give you just my machine overview as far as creature comforts, features, and stuff of it. And then the full review where we get into things like the power, the handling, the usefulness, everyday riding, that'll be in a whole designated video later on. First off the looks, just like the C4 600 I reviewed a little bit ago, I absolutely love the looks of this machine. It's got nice clean lines. These headlights look angry at you like it's scowling with its mouth open growling at you almost and for good reason because when you get on the throttle of this beast as you'll see in the review the full review coming uh she's got the power to back up that growl let me tell you same for the back it's got the beautiful tail lights there i'll turn the lights on in a moment so you can see the lighting dual exhaust from the factory you can see she's brand new guys she's got a mile on so it's still burning off that and the new chemical Treatments they always put on the exhaust and stuff that's still burning off yet Of course, this is a touring so it's got the designated passenger seat We will have to try that out with a review, but I can tell you from sitting on it myself It is very comfy. It's got very very nice grab handles down here You can hold in numerous different ways depending on how you like and this seat is comfortable enough to ride all day on an ATV with whoever's driving with no problems of course being a designated touring machine not only does it have the seat it has the raised foot pegs which is super nice for your passenger and the whole machine is stretched out a little bit it's got a longer wheelbase so you're not crowded by having someone on the back behind you like you would be on a single person atv we'll get into a little more of this in the full review but that longer wheelbase does then also make it ride a little nicer and speaking of ride it's got your typical double A-arm suspension up front. And it's got a very Can-Am-esque trailing arm suspension in the back. But the big kicker with this is this has fully adjustable remote reservoir premium shocks. And a little bit of riding I've done so far, this thing rides amazing. I haven't touched any of the shock settings yet, but it runs fan fantastic it is compression setting soft and hard as well as rebound setting so it's not just your simple uh, hard to soft compression you can adjust your rebound as well same on the front now these are cf moto branded shocks so far like i said i haven't touched the shock setting and this rides very very nice in the rough stuff soaks up all the bumps of course the passenger seat is removable you have your storage rack here with all the, again, quick link, canium, very, very similar type of looks here for all different kinds of accessories you can get. The seat does come off real easy by just pulling on this and it lifts up and comes off. And I'm not sure if the boxes from the Touring fit on the new Gen 3s. I'm betting they will because you can get the same seat on the Tourings in replace of the box. And I don't think the seat has changed. I'm not 100% sure on that, 
but I'm pretty sure that the Overland boxes would fit on this if you wanted to spend money and get them for when you didn't have a passenger on. Again, up front here, same thing, same rack, identical rack front and back, which is nice because if you break one or the other, then you can replace it with one or the other. It does have little access panels up here that gets you into your radiator, your coolant, your fuse box is all there nice and neat. Your diagnostic port right there. And like I said, identical rack in the back. And under this access port is your battery. And you do have a little bit of room in here. You could store maybe a couple little tools here and there. Not a lot, but a little bit. And that unfortunately is a downside to the 1000, just like the 600. Unless you spend the money for storage boxes, there is not a whole lot of onboard storage. You get one little pocket right here. It's big enough for a pair of gloves and that is about it so that is so that is one area where my hd7 still outshines the cf motos is on the onboard storage and still one of the main reasons i picked the gen 3 outlanders over a cf moto of course you've got some pretty nice looking wheels for stock trim wrapped in 27 inch nine tires up front and 27 11s in the back so not a square setup but I kind of prefer the offset setup because it makes it handle so much better having just a little bit skinnier tire on the back. Of course, these CF motos come with a winch. This radiator guard comes out super easy. I think I can even do it one-handed here. Look at that, I can. You can get in there and clean that puppy off so easy if need be. And I like the fact that they paint it black. So when the grill's on, it doesn't stick out and scream at you look at me i'm a nice shiny radiator and instead you get to gawk at all the good lookingness of the fascia itself and speaking of that gorgeous fascia let's get these lights on and check out these the accent lighting because i love it more so than the 600 even it has just a solid beam brow and i love it i love it of course headlights led and they are bright and again on the rear you got a nice gorgeous solid line there for your running lights this puppy also has led brake lights and one of the best features of these cf motos that i love is they have designated reverse lights these leds and you saw in the footage from the 600 these puppies are bright they're not just for looks they are very functional. Now that brings us to the coup de grace of the Gen 3 C Force 1000. And the thing that sets it apart from any other of its competitors, especially for the price point, and that is this gorgeous seven and a half inch display up here. As I power this puppy out, I am just in awe of how gorgeous this display looks. It has different displays you can actually select here if you go down to where it says subject style here is all the different displays you can have it this one might be easiest for you guys to see in the daylight so let's select that one go back and look at that it is just gorgeous it tells you all your information there this does have phone connectability Although I'm not sure if that's available yet in the United States. I was thinking the last time I was on CF Motors dealer website for work that this wasn't quite available uh, in the States yet to connect your phone to it. But that should be coming here soon, at least at some point. All right, quick interjection here. Uh, I was wrong. I thought uh, just for kicks and giggles, I was going to try to connect my phone to uh, the C-Force here. And it did indeed connect. So let me show you here. devices Jay's iPhone connected so I'm not sure what features are all available yet to use with a connected phone but your phone will connect to it so I was wrong correction made continue on with the overview for a machine that is has an MSRP of just under 10 grand this is amazing technology they've included in this and of course this has downhill assisted control you can turn on and off Tri-mode power steering. We have normal mode, 
in work mode, just like the 600 I reviewed, although something special and something that's awesome with this 1000, with all them extra ponies, 90 horsepower is what these guys are rated for. You get this sport mode. And I'm really anxious to see the difference between normal and sport mode, which again, we'll get to when we get to the full review video. Your controls here are just like the 600 were, four wheel drive with diff lock available here on the right. And you got your power switch, your headlight switch, your override button, your mode button right there so you can switch quickly on the fly. And then these three down here is what controls your different menus and stuff when you're going in and looking at all your different menus. Now one of my other big complaints with the C4600 besides the lack of storage was the seat. Although the seat was comfortable, the shape of it slid me a lot farther forward than I wanted to be. This 1000, however, that is not the case. The seat is not only soft and cushiony, it puts me right where I want to be for driving. Handlebars are the perfect height for me. They're not too high, they're not too small. They are up a good bit higher than my Outlander. Not quite as high as the C4 600, but they're in a good position for sitting or standing. And I like the fact that when you have the two up seat on, it raises up enough, it gives you a little bump stop. Now, if you're doing more aggressive riding where you want to be up and down and shifting your weight, you're probably going to want to take the second seat off. But if you're just cruising around and stuff, it pretty much keeps you right where you want to be for sitting. Just like the 600 too, these foot pegs, very aggressive spikes here for grabbing your shoes for you and the passenger with this very nicely raised portion on the outside. It'll help keep your feet from flying off. Should you decide to get a little off camber or a little wild in some Rockies and uh, need that little extra grip to save your life from falling off or save your wife from falling off if your wife is with you, maybe I should say it that way. Just like the C4 600s, the 1000s come standard with hand guards, which is nice. 800s do as well. The 800s are an identical body-wise to the 1000, just with a slightly smaller power plant that I believe is rated for 74 horsepower. I did not look that up before filming. I'm pretty sure it's 74 horsepower compared to the 90 of the 1000. But I've driven them both back to back, and from a stop, they feel very similar as far as power delivery. And where the 1000 has the advantage then is on the mid to upper end of its RPM range. Once you get up there in speed, the 1000 does have a bit of advantage over the 800. But on slower stuff, they are very, very comparable. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll be talking about that more in the full review. But I am super excited to have this guy here at the farm. Get some good miles on him. And give you guys my honest opinions on it. I've been drooling over this machine ever since they showed up at our dealer and I've had to look at them on a daily basis and I got to drive them around the parking lot so now I finally get them here to the farm we'll do our testing as usual take over all the obstacles we've seen in the past and uh I bet you it wouldn't be too hard to talk Dan into lining up his Renegade 1000 with this guy and seeing how they compare power wise yes Utility versus sport, I'm sure the Renegade's still gonna whoop it, but I bet you this thing does better than you think. So yeah, this video I'm gonna put out here probably almost immediately, and I'm not gonna start filming my review for the next couple of days. So if there's anything specific you want me to test on this, then let me know in the comments below and I will squeeze that into the review. So again, big thank you to Mountain Extreme for providing this demo for me to use. If you guys are handy, the Central PA area or anywhere really, we've had someone travel in from Ohio today to trade in a vehicle for an X3. And make sure you head over to their website, see what all is in our inventory, and uh, make a stop on by. Come back to the service department and say hi to me while you're there. So I hope you're excited for this review coming up here in the next couple weeks. And thanks for watching. All right, all right, but it's time. This isn't the official review yet, but I gotta, I gotta start this puppy up and give you at least a sound clip of what the exhaust sounds like because it sounds pretty good. So let's fire this beast up. That is just a gorgeous display. I love it. I'm in reverse because I was testing the lights. Let's 
put her in park. Now she'll start. Pretty quiet and idle. But she's got that nice healthy V-twin rumble to her. I think you get the gist of it and hopefully can tell through video that it still sounds pretty good and look they even give you a little warning sticker so you don't burn your little hands don't touch when hot